Long lost father returned right before my wedding, offering $500,000 to walk me down the aisle and revealed a heartbreaking secret about his health. Hello everyone, I'm 32F, and I am utterly conflicted about what to do concerning my relationship with my father. It's quite intricate and requires substantial background. My parents got married but separated just before I was born, finalizing their divorce a few months later. Regrettably, my father decided not to be a part of my life from the outset. You see, my dad was a chronic cheater and an alcoholic. They had married young because they were together throughout university, and my dad proposed to my mom thinking it was what he wanted. However, I suppose people change, and so do their feelings because three years into their marriage, my mom discovered he had been spending time with his ex-girlfriend Hannah, whom he used to date back in high school. They had reconnected, and she seemed fixated on him. My mom told me how Hannah would show up at the house, demanding to see my dad. If he didn't answer her calls, she would insist on having dinner with him and be generally quite disrespectful to my mom and their marriage. Whenever dad and Hannah would meet, they would drink heavily, which would prevent dad from returning home. Hannah would insist he walk her back to her house. My mom told me how dad would show up the next morning still hungover, and if mom asked why he was out all night, they would have a shouting match. It wasn't just Hannah. My dad would also have flings with random women from the bar, but Hannah was a constant. My dad could be quite cruel with his words. He would constantly tell my mother how pathetic she was and how other women were much prettier than her. He would also throw things at her if she ever asked him to stay away from Hannah. This continued for four years because my mother was infatuated with my dad and thought he would somehow return to who he was during their university days. One day, Hannah sent an inappropriate message to my mom from my dad's phone saying he is not yours. My mother had enough and packed her bags to go live with her parents, my grandparents. However, my grandfather did not approve of this decision. He would mock my mother for leaving her husband and not being a good wife. He was strongly against my mother seeking a divorce because, according to him, people should stay in their marriages even if ITVJTM is difficult. My grandmother was the only one who supported her. My mom knew she needed to find a job and move out. However, during this time, my mom discovered she was pregnant with me. My mom told me she never once considered not having me because she had always wanted to be a mother. When she informed my dad about the news, he was shocked but also pleased. My dad begged my mother to return home and promised to give up drinking. My grandfather encouraged my mother to go back to him, believing it was the right thing to do. My mother reluctantly agreed as she had no other option at that time. My dad did give up drinking and stopped seeing other women during that time. He worked hard to buy all the baby supplies for me and my mom was happy. Hannah never appeared again, and my mom gradually began to forgive my dad for their past. I was born a healthy baby and my mom told me how everyone was overjoyed when I was born. For a while, everything seemed to be going well, or so my mom thought until a woman showed up at my parents' house with a pregnant belly. Apparently, my dad had slept with a stranger once during my mom's pregnancy, and the woman had tracked him down. She demanded my dad pay child support and my dad lost his temper again. Being the coward that he is, he didn't want to take responsibility. My mother also wanted nothing to do with him anymore. She informed him that she wanted a divorce, packed her bags, and took me to live with her parents. My grandfather did try to put up a fight, but my grandmother decided to put her foot down. She threatened to kick him out since it was technically her house, which she inherited from her parents, and my grandfather backed down after that. Although he was resentful that my mother had walked away from her marriage and worried about what his church friends would say, he helped my mom take care of me in whatever way he could. My mother filed for divorce and the court was not in my father's favor. Thankfully, he was mandated to pay child support until I turned 16 and the other woman did the same. My dad, being the resentful person he is, decided to hurt my mother by saying that he wanted nothing to do with me and gave up full custody. My mother was hurt, but she knew it was better that I didn't grow up anywhere around him. I grew up with my mother and my grandparents, and I never even knew having a father was normal. It was only when my friends started to tease me about it that I began to question my mother. She would always change the subject and tell me how I was too young to understand. My grandmother would tell me the same thing. It was only my grandfather who was honest with me. He told me that I had every right to know where my father was and showed me pictures of him and his mom. In the pictures, my parents looked so happy. I could finally understand where my curly hair and green eyes came from since my mother and her side of the family all had straight hair and brown eyes. I felt curious to know more about my dad. As I grew up, I found out more and more about him. I decided to write letters to him and would beg my mother to mail them, but she would refuse. I would then seek help from my grandfather who would begrudgingly agree. I wrote several letters to my dad but never received a reply. When I was 10 years old, a week before my birthday, I decided to confront my dad. We lived in a small town and I knew the neighborhood he lived in, even though I didn't know which was his house. I cycled to each and every house around the locality asking for him. In the end, 
one of his helpful neighbors pointed out his house to me. I was so nervous to ring his doorbell, but I gathered up my courage and thought he would be happy to see me finally. I wanted to show him that he was still my dad no matter what. When he opened the door, he looked like he had been drinking since last night. He stared at me for a few minutes before his eyes widened and he realized who I was. He immediately looked around and asked what the hell I was doing. My face fell and I told him timidly that I was here to meet him. I told him how I was going to be 11 soon and wanted to invite him to my birthday party. I told him that none of my friends believed I had a dad and I wanted him to attend my party. He looked shocked and told me to wait outside for a few seconds. He went inside, got his car keys, then put my cycle in his back seat and asked me to get in. Throughout the drive he looked angry and I felt like I had made a grave mistake. He didn't utter a single word, and when we reached my home he yelled at my mother to come out. My mother ran outside when she saw me standing next to him and asked me if I was okay. My grandparents looked taken aback seeing my dad as well. My dad continued to berate my mother for allowing me to go and see him and told her, I don't ever want to see your child in front of my face again. I felt numb in pain and hurt as he continued to yell about how he didn't sign up for this and hated seeing how things turned out. Similar I looked to him. He then drove away as if I meant nothing. I still remember the tears falling down my face. It felt like someone had kicked me in my stomach and the pain was everywhere. My mother just hugged me and kept crying. My grandparents brought us inside and even my grandfather broke down. He started to tell my mother how this was all his fault and that he should have never told me the truth. But the damage was done. I was numb for days and felt too sick to go to school. My grandfather would stay awake throughout the night for me since he blamed himself throughout all this. When I started to get better, he told me how I needed to forget about my father and that he was going to give me everything I ever needed. But I have to admit that my dad's rejection deeply affected me. I couldn't comprehend why he didn't want any connection with me, and it led me to internalize negative beliefs about myself. I began to think I was flawed, worthless, and even a bad person. These thoughts deeply affected my self-esteem at that age and made it challenging for me to build healthy relationships with anyone. However, my grandfather did everything that he could to replace the role of my father in my life. He would show up to pick me up from my school and would make sure that none of my friends ever bullied me again by talking to their parents about their behavior. He also taught me to hunt and change attire, telling me how I needed to be independent. He would tell me how he never taught my mother all this because he grew up in different times. But after watching my father humiliate me, he did not want me to ever end up in a similar situation. I grew up and slowly started realizing that not everyone was like my dad. I realized I was surrounded by my mother and grandparents who loved me so much, and that was enough for me. When I turned 17 and started applying for jobs, I knew my grandparents were sad that I would be leaving them. I was sad too, but my mother encouraged me to apply to the best companies and talked about how I was not meant to be a small-town girl. I applied to Microsoft, SpaceX, Pepsi, Apple, and Samsung. I got an offer from a good company with a full benefits package and moved out. Everything was so different living in a big city, and it took me a long time to adjust. I would call home crying because I was surrounded by strangers and new faces, and all my feelings of past abandonment and rejection kept resurfacing. This is when I met Jack at my workplace. He was just like me, having come from a small town and not having any friends either. We started to hang out and realized how similar-minded we were. Both of us were thirsty to be successful and make a name for ourselves. We would spend day and night cooped up in the office working or brainstorming ideas. As you can imagine, this is how we fell in love. We admired each other's intelligence and still do. When we both got promoted, Jack and I moved in together. During Christmas, we brought our families to meet each other. To our surprise, Jack's parents and my mother blended well. My grandparents were very proud that I had managed to secure a good job and make a successful career. During this time, my mother did have a talk with and let me know that even though she loved Jack and knew that he was a good guy, she still wanted me to retain my financial independence. She reminded me how dad had abused her and gently told me that she believed I could take care of myself, but that I should always have my own bank account with my emergency fund just in case. I understood where my mom was coming from. Luckily for me, Jack was nothing like my dad. We had our separate bank accounts and split rent and bills equally. We were clear from the beginning that we didn't want children as both of us had childhood traumas and we didn't want to repeat those mistakes, want to pass it on to our kids. I know a lot of people will say that what our parents do has nothing to do with us, but Jack and I just didn't want kids. We were happy on our own from the beginning and were too career focused. Then in April 2022, Jack proposed to me. It was my birthday and he surprised me when I came back home with a candle at dinner. It was a dream come true. He had also secretly brought both our families, and they were all there to congratulate me. He had done all this just to make me happy. I knew then that I was marrying the right man. We then started to plan for our wedding and agreed that we would get married in October of the following year. In November 2022, 
I received a LinkedIn request from a familiar name. I clicked on it to see that it was my dad, which was quite unbelievable. I didn't bother accepting his request because I didn't understand why he wanted to be friends with me on social media when he was not even a part of my life. My dad then sent me a message request, and in the message, he had written how he missed me and wanted to talk to me. I ignored them because I wanted nothing to do with him. Then I received a message on my phone from an unknown number and it was my dad. He wrote me a message saying how he badly wanted to see me and realized what a huge mistake he had made for abandoning me. I showed the message to Jack and he, like me, agreed that there was no way that my dad was really sorry out of nowhere after all these years. However, he told me that I could hear him out if I wanted. Jack assured me that he would come with me just in case my dad tried to yell at me. I agreed and replied back to my dad. He wanted to meet me, so we set up a meeting. I was really nervous to meet my dad, but I was glad that Jack was there for me. My dad was surprised to see Jack with me but wasn't rude to him outright. We made small talk here and there, and then my dad eventually asked me about the ring on my finger and if I was married to Jack. I nervously told him that we were engaged and would be getting married in two months. My dad's face lit up, and he told me it was perfect timing for us that he had reached out to me since he could now walk me down the aisle. I almost gagged when I heard that and turned to look at Jack, who understood exactly how I was feeling. Jack politely told my dad that this was something I needed to decide all on my own, and I could not just forget years of abandonment all in a jiffy. My dad blew up hearing this. He started to scream at Jack, saying that he had no right to come between a father and his daughter and that I should not let him influence my decision. Watching Jack get disrespected really triggered something in me. All those years of being abandoned by him and resenting him came boiling out. I yelled back at him that he had no right to call himself my father when he had signed off his custody rights to my mother and did nothing except pay child support. He had driven me back to my house and shouted at my mother since I had shown up at his house. My dad tried to defend himself by saying how my mother was not easy to live with and that he was just shocked to see a child standing on his porch. He tried to justify how he was still drunk and regretted the way he behaved in front of me. I asked him then why he had never tried to contact me for all those years I lived in the same town as him, but he had no reply. I reminded him that I had accomplished something in my life all on my own and Jack was my partner who understood and loved me for who I was, so he had no right to ever raise his voice at him. Dad tried to say how Jack doesn't really understand that this was a private matter between him and me which just made me laugh. I reminded him that he was the one who had abandoned me, nothing but a sperm donor to me and I wanted nothing to do with him. He begged me to forgive him but I walked out with Jack. I did apologize to Jack for how my dad behaved because he seemed really shaken up by everything. Later my dad sent me several messages saying how I didn't have the whole picture and suggested that we meet privately. I muted his chat so I didn't have to see his messages anymore. I did tell my mother and grandparents about meeting my dad since they had no idea. They were really shocked and a bit pissed that I had even given this a thought. In the end we all agreed that we would continue to live our lives as usual and stay away from him. In October Jack and I had our magical wedding. All our families attended and my grandfather walked me down the aisle. My grandfather was crying throughout the wedding and kept saying how proud he was of me. My mother and grandmother also kept giving me hugs as they could not believe how far I had come in my life. Jack and I danced with our families throughout the night and everyone had a good time. Then we went on our honeymoon for three weeks and it was good for to take a long break from our work. However, when I returned I noticed that there were at least 100 messages from my dad. Since his chats had been muted I didn't notice earlier. I went through the messages and they ranged from seeking sympathy to being pissed that I got married in private and did not invite him. He kept saying how I should have contacted him and how he deserved to be there for me. I guess the word must have gotten around to him since everyone knows everyone in my old town and my dad found out that my grandfather had walked me down the aisle and was pissed. When I read his messages I guess he must have noticed that they were all read so he called me immediately. I picked up the call and he started to tell me how I had betrayed him and that he never thought the day would come when I would treat him this way. I really tried to patiently explain to him, yet again, that it was not betrayal when he was not my father to begin with. My dad then started to say how he had saved up $500,000 for my wedding and was going to give it to me. I scoffed upon hearing this because I thought that there was no way that this was true. Then my dad continued to say that he was ready to give me this money, but all I had to do was get married again even if it was a court wedding and invite him so he could be there for me. He told me how it was his dream to watch his baby girl get married and even if I was already married he would compromise as long as I agreed to his terms. I don't know what he was thinking or if he was even right in his head but I straight up told him that this was ridiculous and I didn't want his money which made him pissed. He started yelling at me that I was just a spoiled brat and that I was cruelly punishing him. He said other things as well but I told him that I was done hearing him out as my patience was wearing thin. Since then he has kept texting me about how I broke his heart and that getting married again just for him wasn't even a big deal. 
I don't understand what obsession he has about seeing me get married again, and I honestly do not understand if I am in the wrong for refusing to get married again, even though my dad wants to pay me $500,000. Update. Okay, I've heard everyone out. There are so many comments under my post that it has taken me a while to get through them. First of all, a lot of you have concerns that my dad is probably lying again, which might be true. Also, since I find it extremely hard to believe he has $500,000 and just wants to give it to me without any strings attached, I do agree that his behavior seems extremely suspicious, have theories that he might be gravely ill and in need of an organ transplant, which terrifies me because there is no chance I would agree to donate anything to him. I feel like I need to confront him to find out the truth and give both of us some closure since something definitely seems off, and I want to understand what BDJTM is really happening. Secondly, many of you are asking about what happened to my dad's other child. Honestly, I have no idea. Unlike my mother, that woman wanted nothing to do with my dad except for the child's support. It was a one-time encounter, so they had no interest in each other VJTM's lives. I don't VJTM know if the other child has ever tried to reach out to him, nor do I care. It VJTM's my dad VJTM's problem in his life. He already messed up my life, so I doubt he would do any better with his other kid. Update 2. Well, I finally have an update and some of you may not like it. I decided to meet my dad this past weekend to sort things out once and for all. He was more than willing to meet. This time I didn't VDJTM bring Jack because I wanted to handle it alone and confront my dad about everything. We met at a cafe, and I told him I knew something was up because there was no way he suddenly felt remorseful for everything he did years ago. My dad looked down ashamed and admitted I was right. He explained that last year he had been working when he suddenly had a severe headache and collapsed. He was taken to the hospital where doctors found a tumor in his brain. I won't get into the medical specifics, but they basically told him he didn't VGTM have long to live since the tumor was inoperable. After he was injured at work, he received a significant settlement because the company wanted to avoid legal issues but they also terminated his employment. Since then he realized all the opportunities he had missed and the people he had alienated in his life. He said his biggest regret was not being there for me. His voice cracked as he shared how he had a tough childhood with an abusive father which made him think that BDJTM's how fathers behaved. When he met my mom, he thought he could finally be happy so they got married. However, the stress from work and accumulating bills led him to become like his father, turning to alcohol and smoking. He acknowledged knowing he was becoming a monster but felt unable to stop and offered no excuses. He told me he gave up custody because he didn't VJTM want to risk treating me the way his father had treated him. He was terrified of the anger inside him and couldn't VDTM move past it. When he saw me at his door, he wanted to break down and hug me but he feared letting me back into his life because he knew he would only let me down. He shared that he never started another family or got married, choosing to live in isolation to avoid causing pain to anyone else. He admitted he deserved all the anger and resentment I felt but he was begging to be part of my life because he had only a few months left and wanted to spend that time with me. He regretted not being a good father and wanted to make amends in the time he had left. I hate to admit it but I cried. I know some of you will say he was just making excuses but he is still my father and this was the first time he had been so honest and open with me. I told him that while I understood his situation, it was still hard for me to forgive him reasons. I still could not just allow him to waltz into my life as he pleased. I told him that he might have dreamed of walking me down the aisle during my wedding but I spent my whole life wanting him to be there for my birthdays, sports events and graduations but he never showed up. Dad nodded and admitted that he knew it was all his fault. He then said that regardless of my decision, he had already set up a will. The $500,000 he mentioned, along with his house and car, would be going to me. He told me he was sorry for everything and wished he could go back to his 20s and slap himself for being such a fool. He told me that I should never become someone like him and that if I ever have children, I should be kind-hearted like my mother. He then took out pictures he had taken of my mother while she was pregnant with me. He had taken pictures of her almost every month, and if my parents' marriage had not failed, it would have looked like a movie. He sat with me and told me the story behind each picture and what my mother was doing at that time. I could hear the pain and regret in his voice as he remembered everything. Seeing those pictures broke my heart again because my parents looked so young and so happy. He told me to take the pictures with me since they rightfully belonged to me. As if this wasn't enough, he then took out an old box and I was shocked to see all my letters inside. This man had literally saved each and every letter I'd ever written and asked my grandfather to mail. I cried seeing my childish handwriting and the way I had written about missing him and begging him to come back. My dad got teary-eyed too and told me that he read all the letters and it only made him drink more because he knew he didn't deserve the love I had for him. He informed me that he would not contact me again until I was ready to talk to him but urged me to get in touch before it was too late for him. When we were leaving the cafe, I don't know what came over me but I hugged him. He was taken aback but then warmly hugged me back. Since then, 
I feel like I have finally gotten all the answers in my life. All those answers I chased for as a child have been given to me now. I now understand why my dad did not want to have a relationship with me, and although his past does not excuse his behavior or his responsibilities as a father, I am glad that he stayed away from me because he knew he didn't want to treat me like his dad treated him. I am grateful that I grew up with warm, loving people like my mother and grandparents who made my life so much easier. I feel like my 10-year-old self can finally rest knowing that it was not my fault for what my dad did. Update 3 Thank you everyone for all your replies and DMs after my update last week about my dad. I feel seen and heard after reading some of the messages where others have gone through situations like this. I have talked to my mother and she agreed with his version of the events so I guess my dad wasn't lying. My mother was aware of my dad's side of the family and how they treated him throughout his childhood which is why I was never introduced to his parents. I told my mother how dad had saved my letters and her pregnancy pictures and she was surprised as well. She says she will have my back if I decide to talk to my dad even though she wants nothing to do with him. She understands that he means well now and might have genuine regrets during the last months of his life. To be honest, I have not fully decided yet whether I should continue my relationship with my father or not but I do feel bad for the guy. Jack agrees with me and has encouraged me to take baby steps which is exactly what I will be doing. Doing. I will take my relationship with my dad one meeting at a time and see how things go from there. I will also be going to therapy to deal with my own issues as several of you have suggested. You are right VDJ. I don't want to be like my dad and carry around all the hate and resentment in my heart. I will do better and take care of myself 